they realize that in order to do this, being identifiable as one of those four people is not a good idea. And that even having recruited people to understand that there's even such a group is a bad idea. So that's the first ring. Those four people, they know what the conspiracy is. They're actually the heads of it. Now, each of those four people go off and recruit entire rings of people. Okay, so you create four completely sub-separate groups that have nothing to do with each other. And the leader of each of those groups says, we are the most powerful entity and, and, and that kind of thing. So each of these groups thinks that they're the, the tip top. So they, they, they're really awesome, right? Then you give each of those groups of 20 people the ability to go out and create another group of, say, 160 people per group. So now you've got... 20 groups uh, 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 that have been created and then 160 groups that have been created off of each of those, each group thinking that they are the center of the conspiracy, none of them even being aware that they're two, three, four degrees of separation. Now, even that group is not the end of the thing. The next uh, uh, layer down is the organizational level. So do you want all your government departments or your heads or your universities or your uh, businesses and, and all of these kind of things? And that way, from the top to the bottom, nobody knows what they're a part of, and the people at the very, very top who nobody even knows exists can exert inordinate amounts of control over the entirety of society. Now, I believe that this is indeed uh, a strategy that we should implement. Okay, imagine what would happen if you got some uh, really, really bright truthers together who started a truth conspiracy. You know, that we were, we were coming together to create a conspiracy against the conspirers. Can that be done? And, and the answer is, I'm not sure. Because everybody's got a goddamn ego about it. Everybody has their own uh, way of doing things. Now, that to some people may be uh, considered a weakness. Oh, you're all off doing your own things and you're not together well, and what have you. If I may. But one, one, last, may. one last thing. Okay. Um, when people are off individually doing their own thing, they'll often come together every now and again and share their knowledge with each other, and everybody goes away from that group with, whoa, yeah, you know, Free Your Mind Conference, uh, Red Pill Expo, Anarchapulco, these, uh, these great uh, conferences that are being uh, done uh, by American thinkers uh, nowadays. This is sort of starting to get that ball rolling whereby people can coordinate without becoming part of a group you know without becoming part point. of a snake with a head to cut off that's my point you made my point for me that's what i'm referring to when many good minds yeah i'm not yeah as you said the founding fathers not, a lot of them didn't get along with each other very few of them actually did you know i don't expect everybody to be holding hands singing kumbaya and giving each other reach arounds in the shower i don't expect that at all not at all <laughs> we're all human we all have our own you know, some of us are going to get along. That's great. Some of us are not going to get along. That's just as well. It's a free society. We have a free, we have the freedom to, you know, interact and choose who we want to be around and do what we want to do. That's part of being human. That's part of, you know, being forced to, to deal with each other isn't, you know, that's not freedom. That's slavery. That's a form of besides thought slavery. The that, besides the fact that I'm back, you make a perfect point. As a matter of fact, this goes right along with esoteric knowledge too, and I'm talking about about esoterics before it gets through the uh, parts through the New Age narcissism filter, like the actual real knowledge. You know, when people talk about um, um, working on yourself, developing yourself, being focused on yourself, being a little selfish. This is what they're talking about. It's like like what uh, what Jesus said. You can't pull the speck out of your brother's eye if you got a big fucking plank protruding out, out of your own head. So when you heal yourself and you help yourself and you reach that level, um, then you can do things like operate as an, a, a sovereign individual working with other sovereign individuals, not as a group think hive mind, but you're doing your thing, they're doing their thing, they're doing their thing, they're and you're sharing information. Every once in a while you come together for things like PSEC hangouts and Anarchapoco and so on and so forth. You know, you have your points where you're doing your own thing, then you come together and converge, share information, share resources, separate back out again, do your own thing. And 
That's why being authentic and being genuine and being honest is so important and not being the giver of fucks in that regard about what other people are going to think of you because you send out ripples, you know, people try to convince each other and force each other. No, you got to believe this. You got to think this way. We don't think that way. Instead, if you embody the change you are looking to create in the world, if you walk your fucking talk and you're not a virtue signaling hypocrite, then you inspire others. Then you don't got to convince anybody. Because the ones that do, that that are really triggered by what you're doing are going to find you insufferable, and they're they're not even going to talk to you because they're going to be like, "Well, fuck that guy. He's a cuckoo or whatever." I got a good and example the of that. Yeah. Really inspired. The people that are really inspired by you, you won't have to convince them. They'll come up to you and go, "Oh my God, how are you doing that? I want to know." Because curiosity is more powerful than trying to convince by force. Because curiosity is a free will choice on behalf of the curious person. I mean, look at look at a little a little child, right? When a little child is curious, you cannot get them to fuck off. They're like all up in your shit. When they're curious, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? How are you doing that? Let me do that. Let me try that. <clears throat> but if you try to force them, clean your room. No! <laughs> you know? It. So it's, just, it's the same thing. When you're being the change, you're like what Katarina was saying about her bus. She wasn't trying to evangelize and go and say, hey, I'm sustainable. I'm in a bus. I got a sink in there and I got a toilet system in there and refrigerator and I'm solar powered and I'm I'm totally sustainable. So be like me. Otherwise, you're evil. Fuck you. She's not doing that. She's just being herself. People are observing her doing that. And they're going, wow, that's so cool. She's got solar power. She's got internet. She's got computers. She's got a, a sink in there and a stove. And she's got all this stuff. And she's not paying rent. She's not paying a, 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 into a slavery system. She's actually surviving on her own and doing it for real and even being creative. Uh, you should see the, the pictures of, of um, her bus, too. Like I know that in in the version of this video that I put on, on uh, PSEC, I will kind of superimpose the, uh, you know, a picture of the bus, but she's a really good artist, angelizeart.com, and she has the bus, the outside, painted up decked out it looks really cool and she's even got angelized.art.com painted on the side of the bus it is it is fucking legit and people just love it and they see that she's doing the sustainable thing but it's not like poverty homeless fake sustainable like well i'm living in a tent and going hungry but you know i'm sustainable and i'm living off the grid no she's got solar power she's got toilet she's got sink she's got stove you know she's got inter an internet connection she's got a tablet a phone a laptop and you know she's got all the comforts of home she's not you know living in a, in a tent poor broken homeless and calling that enlightened new age off the gridness or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. so this is what we need to do we need to be the change like you know me here like I do the best I can. One of the things that I like doing other than PSEC, um, I've got some, you know, sustainable development stuff that I'm doing here too. I call it Pondscape. But like, I got a pond out in my backyard that I built. It's got a bog system that I built to where instead of, I was thinking, you know, instead of being a part of this planned obsolescence disposable society where they want me to buy this filter system where the parks break down and you have to keep replacing it and it has all this maintenance well you know um, for billions of years nature has not needed anything to actually maintain it so why don't i just build a bog system where um nature is cleaning the water for me holy shit it works and i don't even have to pay nature nature doesn't ask me for a dime and i've got an indoor pond and i'm building everything up to be like this like i call it the pond room right now it's eventually going to be like a rainforest room I'm, I, and i'm going to be growing all sorts of food and all sorts of stuff in there like i want to be 
be an example of like, hey, the average person can do this. They don't need acres of property. They can be living on this tiny rectangle of a property in, in a condensed city like Chicago and just like, you know, do a bunch of stuff and like that they can do it. It doesn't require them being like a, a, a millionaire with like 10 acres of property or whatever. So we all just need to do the best we could do and send those ripples out. Be that example of like, hey, you know. We, we, you know, we can be the change. We, we, you know, we that we each do our little part and it inspires everybody else, and it just ripples, man. It just does, and it works, and I've seen it work. If you put out the example of being a good slave, everybody around you will have their idea of being a good slave reinforced. But if you put out the example of being a good free person, everybody else will see that example, and it, and it, and, it, and as you say, those ripple effects go out. Um, however, yeah. I like the whole idea of baiting. All right, now in the um, idiocracy sense of the word go away i'm baiting and this <laughs> it's a it's a it's a masturbation reference anyway uh, uh, uh i had this uh, whole idea behind uh promiscuity and depression right so i did a couple of google searches and i go okay okay i just watched this uh, video uh by blue collar logic about women who get abortions um and that kind of thing and what was interesting is that the psychology today and a number of other uh websites have actually cataloged and done these huge studies of uh, women who've had abortions and, and, and things like that, and their rates of depression, psychosis, uh, 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 suicide, every single thing across the board is so much higher than uh, everybody else. Double to quadruple the numbers, you know, that kind of thing for women who've had abortions. And so I was like, you know what? I want to I get a whole bunch of people uh, to go away. All right, so I'm going to type down this question. Are you more likely to be happy if you sleep around and have abortions or if you find a good man and have his child? <laughs> the amount of abuse that I got from all these, I haven't even abortions and there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> you know, that brings another, that brings another that, You know, you brings, just get rid of them. Um that. And, and what's uh, interesting about this thing is uh, one of the people in the chat room, uh, they said have no fear, and I completely disagree. I think fear is probably the main driving force in my life, and that's why I've done so much positive actions, because of my fear of getting enslaved and subsequently exterminated. All right, seriously, I'm, I'm really scared shitless of that. You know, I don't want to get exterminated. It's on my bucket list. But uh, I'm, I'm procrastinating on, on, on that one. I want to put it off as long as fucking possible. Um, and the... hey, hey, I want to add to that and, and uh, val validate you on that. You know, people think that being brave means having no fear. No, it means being afraid and doing what you need to do anyway. The new age concept of, oh, have no fear. It's not have no fear. It's don't let fear co-opt and control you. There's a difference between being controlled by fear and having it. When you just have it, but you're the one in control, it can be a very useful, very motivating thing that yields positive benefit. But when you allow it to co-opt you and control you, well, then that's fear-based mind control. That's MK Ultra. That leads to the world we have. I just wanted to add something. Um, you know, going back to the abortion thing, whether it's that or, you know, any other irresponsible, you know, just sleeping around with other people, doing irresponsible things, damaging your own self-worth, doing things that totally co-opt you even deeper than, you know, the default levels at which co-option exist within a, a standard environment. You know, it, it really goes back to what Dave was talking about earlier. You know, the people who are unwilling, the people who are unwilling to better themselves and be an example of what humanity it's at, it, at its potential best can be, those people will take care of themselves by their own hand. Nobody is going to have to do anything to them. They will be their own undoing because their irresponsible actions will have irreversible repercussions on their health, on their mental psyche, and they will be the ones to destroy themselves. Nobody else did that to them. They chose to make that choice. Yeah. You can't and, blame and, uh, the globe. You can blame the globalists to a point, but there comes a point where the personal responsibility of whether or not you allow that damage to be the the main driving force in your life, there's a certain point where it comes to you're the one responsible for yourself and you can decide whether or not you want to go along with that or not. And you know, me being personal be, being the 
me being right here, being the unicorn, I've dealt with a lot of that damage. I've seen a lot of females who are messed up, fucked up, had to deal with that. And I've decided to allow it to be a use of strength just to see, you know, just as an example of like, okay, yeah, humanity's messed up. That doesn't mean I have to be messed up. I can use that as a lesson. I can take the negative situation from that, make a positive um, analyzation of that, apply all the positive aspects of what I learned from that experience and become a better person as a result down the road. Yeah. That's why that, that's that's why the meek shall inherit the earth because everyone else is going to commit fucking suicide and the meek's going to be all that's left. Well, the, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, the reason why the meek shall inherit the earth is because the original Greek translation translates as a man who knows how to use his sword and keeps it very sharp, but he doesn't yep. withdraw mm-hmm. it from its scabbard. Okay, mm-hmm. that is the thing, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You need to know how to defend yourself. You need to know how to be strong. You need to know how to be powerful. You need to know how to stand up for yourself and to defend others as well. If you do not, people will come in and enslave you and destroy everything that you have built. It is, it is just that simple. Totally, okay, totally. Here's the American in me coming out. Thomas Jefferson said his famous quote, the beauty of the Second Amendment is... This is a this is a rough. Um, I'd have to look up the exact. Is this the wolf and the sheep one? Because I I can actually remember it. Okay, um, a democracy a democracy is two sheep's and a, is uh, two wolves and a sheep deciding on what's for dinner. A republic is when the sheep has a gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good one. But Thomas Jefferson said a, be- a beautiful quote about the Second Amendment: "Is the beauty of the Second Amendment is unless there's you know a government." you know, total government co-option, it never has to be used. It was, that amendment was put into our constitution for that specific reason. It was to give the people of the United States some teeth. But the unfortunate thing here in the States is me and Dave both know oh so well, we have this overabundance of westernized, um, you know, and, it, and it's the bad kind of westernization. It's the kind of overabundance where it's turned people in this country into lazy schmucks where people are just lazy and glued to their chairs and totally apathetic. They want to watch Pornhub and the NFL, and they don't give a fuck all what's going on outside their living room. As long as they get their beer and pizza on time, everything is okay. And they've got maybe about three days' worth of food, and, you know, yeah, they get mad. You know, they'll watch the news and get angry and go, "Ah, somebody ought to do something about that, Ah." you know, and scream and shake their fist and say, man, you know, and you'd ask them the question, well, why don't you do, you know, what what would you do if the government, ah, I'd shoot them, and it's like, yeah, right, sure you would, you know, but that's you been know, my I... aggravation thus far, because primarily I'm at that point where I realize how, you know, I, I, I really realize how bad it is, how fucked the political system is, how completely broken it is, it cannot be fixed at, at the level it's gotten to. It's completely rotted mind. out. And broken purpose, mind you. But hey, Rich, can I? Um, uh, you you remind me of something very important. I want to add to your point, um, if I may. You know, all this sure. entitled attitude you were talking about. The people want to watch porn, have a drink, beer, and uh, blah, 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 and all that. And oh, blah, 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 uh, everything you just said. Um, one thing, especially here in the states, that people seem to be practically allergic to, is taking personal responsibility. They want to. Mm-hmm. They want to play the blame game, right? I'm That's gonna my say aggravation. Something. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, narcissism. I want to say something that I'm going to say something that's very that I always say that's very triggering among all the other things I say that are also very triggering to most people. Brace yourself. With all these, whether it's whether it's the left, the right, or truthers, or this or that, or whatever, what nobody wants to face, what nobody wants to take the personal responsibility in realizing is that the existence of the elites is merely the most nasty, the most catastrophic symptom and end result of our own collective mental illness. Because we, the many, give away our consent for these psychopathic overlords to lord it over us. And man, especially here in the States, oh, they beg for it. Good God, please enslave me. 
I mean, they don't use all the tabloids, the magazines, you name it. It's everywhere. It's all over the media. And, you know, and even even the truth movement, man, it's like it's like it's the elites fault. It's like, wait a minute. okay, the elites are nasty. They've done what they've done. Nobody is disputing that we're we're being ruled by a bunch of psychopathic overlords. Not disputing that. But the question is, how did they get there? We, the many, consented. And why are we consenting? No, that's not true. Because we've gotten lazy. We want our our beer and our and everything Richard said. And we don't uh, I, I think I think you put the horse before the cart on that one. I, I think you put the horse before the cart on that one, bro. Because if they they created our society. They educated us with their public education systems. They made us what we are. Um, yes. And and that was the yes. pro- that was the it, real it, problem. But then it's like, but you gotta you gotta go back further. Why did they do that? You know, how why were they able? The because they had a cult knowledge. Been, it's always been. Because they had a cult knowledge, extraordinarily large amounts of wealth. They understood human psychology, and they were prepared to use it in order to advance their goals. That's the reason why the public, are, uh, in general, losing this war is because we are not prepared to put everything on the line to get what we want. Give the devil their due. Whatever it is they're doing, it fucking works, and we must learn yes, from this. Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. But, I'm say- but what I'm saying is. If you if you bring it back all the way, there had to be something within humanity for them to exploit in the first place. There had to be something wrong in humanity to be exploited. You know what I'm saying? There had to be a weakness. But that's like saying Pavlov's exist. dogs had had some had inherent weakness. Exploit. You know, they were they were uh, programmed. You know, like Pavlov's dogs putting getting put in a cage and electroshocked and not having the cage door open to the point where you could open the cage door and he'd just sit there being electroshocked. They've done experiments. They figured out how the brain works. I'm not not disputing any of that. But I'm just saying, if you go back before the beginning, before the elites did all that, before all that was even a thing, however long ago that was... There have always been elites. There's always been elites throughout the entirety of history. There hasn't been one period of history that hasn't been dominated by one empire or another. Uh, Talking known history. history. Mm. I mean, if you well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Do you want to operate on what you believe alone? If I may, do you want to operate in life on what you believe alone or what you can prove alone? And and just let's say that's the spectrum. Okay, most people have beliefs and and and, and they've got a few facts or whatever. But if you put most of your eggs in the belief basket, saying, "Well, there's no evidence to suggest any of this," but I'm going to fucking blindly believe it to it, even though there's a hell of a lot of bloody contradictory evidence to it. I'm just going to blindly believe that person's going to get fucking enslaved and killed all right and they're probably going to get other people enslaved and killed but if you operate on facts logic real history shit that you can actually prove when you go out and you do strategies and and you make actions real results come out of them that don't have unforeseen circumstances that come from dishonesty or stupidity i agree no arguments yeah but it just boils down to it's going back to like tartaria and the mud flood you know the greatest co-option there, going back to that whole... That's assuming that even exists. Earlier, ...is, you know, if if that whole part of history has been completely erased and they've completely re-looped things around, we're only living in the times we're living in with the Can knowledge I, that we have. Actually, I need to clear this up for the audience here because that mud flood thing's a complete BS thing. Okay, so, um, what's his name? Uh... Jonathan Gray. Okay, so anybody wants to go uh, search Noah's Ark, Jonathan Gray, on my YouTube channel, and you go watch his presentation on this. He's a New Zealand archaeologist. He found fucking Noah's Ark on, uh, in the Ararat mountain ranges near Assyria, right? And he went there, and part of his presentation uh, was about the evidence of the Great Flood. Now, did you know that 187 cultures, including New Zealand Māori, have oral traditions of a great flood and cataclysm did you know yes. that there are hundreds of thousands of mountain ranges around the world not hundreds and thousands but hundreds of thousands of mountain ranges around this world where excavations have turned up tools land creatures uh, 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 advanced technology and, and all of this kind of stuff all washed yes. up together on the side of the things okay so yep. what happened there this is approximately uh 2,500 years uh, 
uh, BC. They, they reckon around about that time fl- frame or whatever. Now, if you can do that... Oh, wait, I'm not sure about the, uh, the date on that whatsoever. But actually... If you're doing that, you have this angular wobble of the Earth. We go off 23 degrees. Now, uh, theoretically, what happened there, there was either a comet or some kind of celestial event or whatever to, to knock the Earth off of its wobble. And ever since that point, it's been, it's been gradually getting back to the center point. Now, what that does is if you put any giant object on its side like that, the pressure will crack, will crack it. Okay, so essentially what uh, Jonathan Gray thinks happened is that the crust of the earth cracked open. All of these uh, water reserves and uh, things of that nature that were previously underground became above ground uh, water reserves. And it seems to me that it seems to make a lot of sense. It's like, oh, okay, okay. So they found this arc. It's got titanium rivets in it. They've done the metallurgical analysis. It had six decks. And it was built, I think they say, about 150 years after an industrial revolution. Now we, oh, wow. had, an, now we wow. had Now we had an industrial revolution about 150 years ago. All right, so um, what we see now is cataclysm programming. Okay, so human beings are afraid, and I think that we've been traumatized over a long period of history to fear the unknown. And that's why a lot of people don't like facts. They prefer beliefs, because beliefs are kind Mm -hmm. to you. Beliefs tell you exactly what you want to fucking hear. Facts do not. In fact, I don't like facts. I love them. You know why? Because they kill my beliefs. My beliefs are a parasitical organism that that reside amidst my brain that only die when a fact contradicts them. Okay? As Max Deacon likes to say, belief belief is the enemy of knowledge, as Max likes to say. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So now the whole uh, concept of that is, is, and we were talking about how America's fallen. I just watched um, uh, George Carlin's thing this morning about how many dumb Americans there are and that kind of thing. And it kind of occurred to me that... If we are narcissists, and I know that I am, and I think that the vast majority of people have narcissistic tendencies, the difference being some of us realize that we're still human um, and that we can be fallible uh, and that we are often wrong. Now, it's during my interview with Sam Wagner, who's an expert on narcissism and psychopathy, and he himself is a narcissistic psychopath, as, as he's admitted. He said that you can put a narcissist into any situation, any situation, and they'll thrive. If you tell them that if you be good, if you help people, you'll get rewarded for it, that kind of thing, the narcissist will be good and they'll help people and they'll get rewarded for it. But if you tell them if you lie, if you cheat, if you steal, you'll be rewarded for it, they'll do that. Okay, so narcissism has no, almost no morality beyond objective gains. And I think that's because it helps you to uh, get gel with facts, essentially. If you are an egotistical asshole like me, facts matter so much because the fact about yourself being an egotistical asshole is one of the most horrific things you've ever had to deal with. But in knowing that you never dealt with it, and you're only just starting to come to grips with it now, you realize what you've been missing out on the whole time. You didn't know who you were. You didn't know what your motivations are. You didn't know that in actual fact, you're a predator. That's what I kind of uh, realized about myself. I'm kind of like a predator. Um, And I want to lie. I want to cheat. I want to mislead. I want to gain and all of this stuff. But I don't. And the reason I don't do that is because throughout my life, I've been punched in the face for doing things like that. I've had shits, I've had uh, businesses or shit stolen off me for doing uh, uh, things like that. I've lost out on opportunities for behaving the way my brain tells me to act. So over time, I have learned to control those urges. Not because it benefits everybody else per se, but because it actually benefits me. All right. I found a very selfish justification for being a good person and doing the right thing in the world, all based upon my fear of getting enslaved and exterminated, which I, I don't think <laughs> is the ideal. Hey, you know? Vinny. Yep, ju- I agree. Just to, just to clarify something, by the way, um, 
I don't know how much of Max Egan stuff about the Mud Flood and Tartaria and all that you've watched, but the Mud Flood and the Great Flood, two completely different things. The okay. Mud Flood was a, was a smaller event. T- no one is claiming that the Mud Flood and the Great Flood are the same thing. Oh, okay. No, no it's, one's it's claiming totally that. a different event that occurred completely much later. The, the mud flood did not destroy the world. You know, it's mm-hmm. two completely different things. The mud flood was a more minor event. Mm-hmm. Okay, but wasn't the whole There's point of the mud flood that it, that it changed the entire world history and that, and now world history now isn't what it is? How could it do that if it unless it affected the whole fucking world? Well, I'm just saying it wasn't like, you know, uh, catastrophic floods, everything wiped out. Yeah, it affected the world, but it didn't have the level of devastation that the Great Flood had. These are two different events. The only thing I could suggest is watch Max Egan's videos on it. He clarifies better than I can, and we don't have enough time here to do that. It literally takes him several hours to clarify. So if you're truly interested in knowing about that, watch those several hours worth of videos. And if you're not interested, then just don't give a fuck and don't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was thinking about the other uh, flat earth thing the other day. Like uh, one, of, one of my sponsors is a, is a bit of a flat earther, you know, good dude. He's, he's, he's got his head screwed on straight with a, a lot of things. And I just don't buy into the whole, whole flat earth thing for one particular reason. It changes absolutely nothing. And most of the people who believe it uh, yeah. go, go uh, spend the rest of their life uh, telling everybody the earth is flat instead of stopping ruthless criminal sociopaths from fucking exterminating mankind uh so so that is just why uh, (laughs) i've tried to have conversations with a with a lot of flat earthers and when i when when i tell them that the most important thing is is not the shape of the earth um the most important thing is uniting against a common enemy. They go, oh, no, no, no. Once everybody knows the Earth is flat, then we can unite against a common enemy. And if you don't uh, uh, believe as I do, then you're an Illuminati shill sent to, by the government to try to just I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. I can't tell you uh, how many times well, I've done anything yeah. where I've even so much as mentioned the flat Earth on, on a thing, and immediately the accusations of being a shill come out. And that's how you know it's a cult, because you can mm-hmm. predict their reactions. Yeah, hell, a few a few weeks ago, I had I had someone on on Facebook uh, make make a a comment under a Max Egan video I shared or whatever, and they said, "Did you know that Max Egan's a flat earther?" I'm like, "No, I know Max Egan. He's not a flat earther. Listen to his stuff sometime." Like, like it's it's funny. There are people that give Max Egan shit for not being a flat earther, and now there's apparently a section of people that give Max Egan shit because they this is- think. He- is a flat earther this is a realization um i had today um about madness the 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 human race is infected with mental fucking illness ladies and gentlemen make no goddamn mistake and if you keep hanging around with mentally ill people who keep telling you mentally ill shit you're going to become fucking traumatized and what causes mental illness trauma why do you think people get so traumatized and then become part of a fucking cult Yep, exactly. Absolutely. Oh, oh, there's uh, I, Vinny, uh, and I got I got to say this. I don't know if you can get it where you're at in New Zealand. Um, if not, I, I, I get uh, it all the time. My wife's in the next using, room. So. Using Christian and <laughs> using, using Christian and illegally torrented. You didn't hear me say that. That was my insult, inside voice. Illegal torrent. Voice. But anyway, it's it's a series called um, Leah Remeni. Scientology and the Aftermath. It's an A&E series. Oh my god, they go into cults so well. And uh, one of the things that gets that's that even they are starting to slowly realize is like, oh my god, culture. All of society is a cult. We're all infected. Oh my god, you know. So it's like there's this even though it's a mainstream show, <clears throat> um there's this awakening happen within it because they are just like no bullshit talking about narcissism, about cults. They're like, they're brass tacks. They're not, they're not hypey. You know what I mean? And oh my God, is it good? Like anybody who wants to learn about cults and narcissism and collective Stockholm syndrome and all this stuff, Leah Remini, Scientology and the aftermath. Oh, it is. I, I cannot recommend that enough. Yeah, um, and also if you want to learn about narcissism, watch my interview with Sam Varkman that I did last week. 
Um, and if you want to learn about natural law, have a look at my Mark Passio interview that I did last week. And if you want to learn about the uh, the Flat Earth cult, have a look at that Max Egan uh, thing that I did last week. So I did three massive, so important for humanity uh, shows in just in one week. And this is like my uh, first, second week back this year. I've been uh, depressed. I've been off the thing. And, and then I had a couple of realizations. I am the architect of my own destruction. All right. In uh, 2012 and 2013, I trusted a man named Pete Santilli. All right. Even though people warned me he was a psychopath, yeah, and he and he yeah. and he took he took not only my business from me, he took my soul from me. I couldn't work anymore. It was like I went from five days a week doing shows to one day a week because I felt so fucking victimized. And it was only upon this con- these uh, conversations that I had last week with Mark Passio, Sam Vaknin, and Max Egan that I realized something goddamn important. I was the one who made that decision. I was the one who chose to trust him against my better judgment. I was the one. I was the one who attracted somebody into my life who destroyed me, and I didn't take responsibility for it. Instead, I blamed them and tried to expose them. Kind of like blaming an alligator for biting your goddamn hand Just off. With the elite, holy shit, as above, so below, do the dance, ho, ho, ho. And the most important thing of all is that all you watching, if you don't watch and share out all the Vinny Switch show episodes and all the Paradigm Shift and educational comedy episodes, you're an Illuminati show who works for the deep state. I'm kidding. (laughs) Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to get into now is how you can get yourself exfiltrated from that situation because often we 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 tell ourselves really comforting lies for example i'll vote for this guy and he'll fucking solve everything i love it i love people who think like that because there is no end to them all right it's just seriously we're never going to run out of people who believe everything they hear will we Right, and and what the problematic thing is is I've been uh, I think it was that uh, interview with Sam Wagner that really kind of uh, motivated me, and that's why I'm back doing like four or five shows a, a week now because I realized something that each and every one of us has now a responsibility. If you realize that you're not a victim anymore, if you realize that you're actually the architect of your own destruction, you can also be the architect of your own creation. You can also do any of these things. We live on a spectrum, right? And if you realize how bad you're doing things, fuck, you can change, can't you? Right? And that's what I'm doing now. I've, I've just changed. I've stopped smoking weed. I've stopped smoking ciggies. I'm not drinking. I'm not, I'm not doing any, any of this kind of shit that I used to do in order to, in order to stop my pain from hurting me, essentially. And right now, I, I understand my pain so much more that it is a, it's a constant thing at me. I'm always hurting. I'm always on the verge of crying. I'm always on the verge of screaming and yelling. It's like there's no, it's like there's no border between the input and the fight and flight response. It's like a limbic system malfunction, right? I can't operate normally without weed. And so I've stopped smoking weed, and now I've realized that my so-called normal operation as I was operating under weed was in fact me being traumatized and trying to escape from it and not take responsibility from it. And now that I'm not doing that anymore, I feel very, very differently about everything. This, This world is like filled with people who don't know who they are because they're unwilling to ask themselves the hard questions. First hard question you've got to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, am I an idiot? And if your answer is no, then you're probably a fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's the thing. Yeah, Uh, and, and, you know, just, just, you know, um, you know, Vinny's a clone, Max has a prosthetic face, so don't listen to these wackos, I'm kidding. Um. (laughs) Yeah. And, and that's the thing, this, uh, this mental illness, how can you uh, survive it? Um, what was it? How do you understand uh, somebody who's got mental illness? By becoming nuts, just as nuts as they do. And so when people are telling you things and they're confusing and, and they're like, 
you're left kind of wondering or whatever. Part of that's a cult indoctrination technique uh, that gets you to question, you know, the fabric of your reality and that kind of thing. Now, cult indoctrination techniques aren't necessarily a bad thing. You might find that fucking strange coming from me. However, do you live in something called culture? Do you have culture? <laughs> all right. What's yeah. the f- what's the first four? What's the first four letters of culture? I oh, oh, okay. All right. So, how do you raise a child? How do you cult indoctrinate someone? Exactly the same fucking way. You give them a central authority figure that they can't question. A whole bunch of other people around them that'll ostracize them if they don't think the same fucking thing as everybody else. Some fluorescent lighting. Some boring shit that they have to do repetitively, and uh, a little bit of guilt. If you're not doing enough, <laughs> and. Uh, Let's just add on a little bit of sleep deprivation and malnutrition on top of that. Now, I just described schooling, all kinds of schooling. You go into the military, you go into university, you go into high school, you go into primary school, elementary, whatever. It's the exact same cult indoctrination principle. Now, theoretically, what if you could cult indoctrinate the entirety of society to give a fuck about facts, natural law, morality? Okay. Critically. What if there was what if there was a global cult? Like let's say theoretically, Mark Passio is at the head of this cult. Okay, he's the he's the be all and end all. He can't be questioned or whatever. And Mark would never do such a thing. He hates that 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 very idea of anybody uh, not being fallible or or being gods uh, supplanted on earth. He wants the whole concept of morality and natural law to be inside everybody's heart, not just in their mind. You can't just know this. You have to feel it too. The neurons in the brain and the neurons in the heart congruent together that's what our conscience really is a cult of conscience (laughs) decentralized cult with no leader use the weapons of the enemy against them (laughs) if they know the psychology of how to manipulate people into being useless fucking pathetic uh, 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 pieces of trash then surely those exact same methodologies could be used to create a moral human being who would not be bossed around who would in fact stand for what's right i said that so many times that that people are afraid to use the tools of the elites and it's like a tool is a tool if the elites are using it to put people to sleep use it to wake people up and one interesting thing about the word culture break it in two culture flip it around and now it's your cult oh it's your cult culture is your cult yeah thank you my culture it's your cult <laughs> I mean, is your call yeah yeah well that's the thing as well I mean, and we have to kind of get over this whole group think ideology and that's what being independent is about uh, but i think that's why a lot of people uh, independent myself included get really really depressed from time to time because in ancient days we would we would once have a tribe we would have 150 people in a small town that we would know by first name and be able to stop at any point uh, on the road or whatever and be able to talk to. But nowadays, we don't have that anymore. We don't have community. We don't have society anymore. We only have a cult. And it's such a mass cult in such the big cities and such a big fucking internet that now anybody can find their tribe, can't they? But you'll never live with them. You'll never really meet them all, will you? You won't see them on a, on, a, on a daily basis and know their names and know what their kids are up to today, will you? Ladies and gentlemen in the chat room, what did I do yesterday in my free time? You don't know because you're not with me. You don't live with me. And that's the same uh, for all of us. We have a projection. We, we project onto others what we would do. And it's simply yep. not mm. true, ladies and gentlemen. The worst aspect of a good human being is to making the mistake that everybody thinks like you i call it squirrel in a car mirror they don't know that it's it's their reflection by the way now that i don't want to be indoctrinated anymore how do i get this back in here just wondering how, like it's been out for so long how do i get that back in there no matter how much i shove it in my ear i just I can't get it back into my head, and I'm just, I'm just not sure what to do about it. Well, the ancient pharaohs figured it out, bro. You've got to stick a hook up your nose, scramble things up a little bit, and then put it, and then put all the re- all the rest of it up your nose with an iron hook. Okay. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> Problem solved. With this, 
It's it's like one of like it's like that uh, unsolvable geometric shape puzzle on Star Trek. I don't know. I just it won't. I just no matter what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and also that's that's another thing. Brains. People people actually uh, are, are obsessed with this thing called IQ, and they don't realize that there's actually like I think there's eight forms of intelligence, maybe seven. All right, kinesthesia and and uh, things of that nature. Everybody seems to think that IQ is the only thing that matters, whereas emotional intelligence matters, doesn't it? Like if somebody's really pissed off with you and you keep talking and you, and, and you don't realize that they're pissed off with you, that kind of thing, you just wonder, why the hell are they doing that or whatever? If you've got no emotional intelligence, you won't know.